Hello, uh, in this video we're going to solve some of these utility maximization problems. Okay, and uh, that's just a leftover from a uh, previous version of this video. So, left you last time with these three questions, three equal combinations for the consumer, and then uh, a budget constraint type problem, and then uh, an allergy to good X. Okay, so let's, uh, let's go into this other program I have here that allows me to write on this okay and uh, whoops okay so on this indifference curve any of these combinations we would be happy with so we could be equally happy with 12 units of good y and one unit of good x we'd be equally happy with five units of good um, y and three units of good x we'd be equally happy with uh, five units of good X and two units of good Y. All of these are equal levels of happiness, equal level of utility. So second question was uh, if they have a budget of $110, how, what combination would they, would they choose, would, would make them the happiest? So let's, let's look at a couple of these. So first of all, this 12 here, 12 units of good, and then the price rather, sorry, uh, the price of good Y was $10, and the price of good X is $20, okay? So this one here, 12 units, so it's price of 12, or price of 10 times quantity 12, th this consumer can't afford that, because that would cost $120, so they're, they're out on that, okay? How much could they afford? Well, if they spend all of their money on good Y, they'd be right there. Okay, maybe I should use a different uh, green color here. And if they spent all of their their money on good X, you know, those are $20, they could get five and a half units there. Well, that's, I'll make that darker green there, something like that. Okay, so they could spend all, all their money on good X, but that's, there's a lower indifference curve here, right? And so this indifference curve is inferior to this indifference curve, so we don't want uh, we don't want that. Okay, so let's forget about that one. So we're trying to basically we're just trying to find find a, a point on this indifference curve that we can actually afford. So what about uh, eight of good Y? So that's going to be eight times ten, which is eighty dollars on good Y. Okay, this is uh, money spent. Okay, and then good X. That would be two, so that would be forty, and so the total spending is one twenty. This consumer cannot afford that. Okay. Next, let's do this one. What about five units of good Y? So ten times five is fifty dollars on good Y, and then uh, three times twenty is sixty dollars. We add those together, we have a hundred and ten. So this one uh, works out. Okay. Now there's another way to do this, by the way. You just draw the budget budget constraint it'll it'll run right through that point and you're, you're done um, but numerically uh, this one works uh, pretty well right and so this this I like this example because when you go to the store you buy lots of different types of products we, we might just be there for one thing but uh, often we buy a couple different things and we allocate our budget based on uh, what we think is going to maximize our happiness based on the own indifference curve in our head. Just for argument's sake, let's look at one more here. Um, what about three units of good uh, Y? So that would be $30. And four units of good X. Uh, and that's $80. Okay, and this one actually uh, comes to 110 also. So I'm, I, can, I can actually hit either of those. And the uh, budget constraint is going to go right through both of those lines. So both of those will work, no problem. In fact, um, you can probably get even, you know, one of these in between here. Let's look at this one really quick. Um, this one would be spending a hundred dollars on good X because that's five units of good X, and then two units of good Y, and then now we can't afford that, right? So we can afford either of those, and those will make us happy. So let's uh, let's solve these a little bit. Um, quicker okay and so when we do this uh, the intermediate way to do this is we can use calculus to find the tangency of the indifference curve given some kind of budget constraint and basically 
you'll just find this point here uh, based on the indifference curve, right? Now that's uh, in, it's a topic that dominates in intermediate macroeconomics course. So those of you who get a major in economics, uh, you'll get to do a bunch of those. Fun, fun, fun. Um, but for this class, this isn't calculus-based, so I have a way of not doing um, calculus, right? And so what we're going to do is we're going to use this formula. Okay, I'm going to give you a formula instead uh, that does get the calculus. So there's a calculus explanation for what I'm doing, um, but we're not going to do the calculus. We're just going to skip uh, right to the end. So what are we trying to do? We're trying to gain, get the greatest utility for consumers based on what they're going to allocate their money so that the last dollar spent gives them the same additional happiness level. Okay, and so the formula for this, often they use the lambda, but the formula that uh, definitely needs your notes here is the marginal utility of the first good over the price of the first good, and that needs to equal the marginal utility I really have a hard time with this pen on this uh, this program here, sorry. Um, of marginal utility of the second good over the, pr over the price of the second good, uh, given that they have some kind of budget. Okay, so here's, wow, this is terrible. Um, here's what we're doing, okay? This formula allowed, it basically says that the additional happiness of that first unit divided by that, the price of that first unit needs to equal the additional happiness of the second unit divided by the price of the second unit, okay, of that last dollar that we spent, given that I have some kind of budget. Okay, I'm trying to hit uh, a budget here, I'm trying to spend the money that I have allocated towards these two products and to get the most happy, okay? So, uh, you know, there's the calculus, ah, uh, but we're gonna use uh, this other explanation. Uh, well, we're going to do the same thing. But so here's a problem you might see. So a consumer can buy two different things: uh, apples and oranges, right? So two different products. We're actually going to call them here. Call them what they are. Consumer wants to spend ten dollars on fruit at the farmers market. So that's their budget constraint. And the consumer does like oranges more than apples. Now, before we do this, think back to uh, diminishing marginal utility. A consumer isn't going to just buy. Uh, oranges. They like oranges better, but they're not going to just buy oranges. And oranges is a good example because if you eat too many oranges, often you get a uh, you know, sour taste in your mouth or some kind of sore, right? They're very this is somewhat acidic. Um, and then they're not going to buy just apples because actually they prefer oranges to apples, but they also like you know some apples. People like some variety. Okay, so that's what's going on here. Um, so what we got here is, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to, nope, that's, uh, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm trying to get rid of that there, and I can't. Here's what I'm going to do. So we've, we've been given a table here where, let's see if I can delete that while I'm talking here. We've been given a table here where, we have apples, we have the price of apples. We have oranges, we have the price of oranges. And if we recall, in the previous slide, the, the consumer is going to spend $10. So the budget is $10. Okay. And what this, this, this is the number of, of oranges and apples that they buy. So this is the quantity. This is marginal utility, the additional happiness they get from the, each additional unit. So the first apple gives them 10 levels of happiness or utils sometimes they're called in there. Um, so they like the first one. The second one they like, but they don't like it quite as much. Okay. So uh, the third one they, they still like it, not as much. And we see this is the diminishing utility here. Okay. Now over here on the orange side you can see the, the marginal utility much higher from eating oranges rather than apples. So the first uh, orange here is 24. These are just self-reported uh, enjoyment uh, ideas, right? And marketers actually do use uh, numbers like this, so this isn't that unrealistic in my opinion. So then the additional orange, the second orange, you get an additional is 20, then we get 18, then we get 16, then we get 12, and so on and so forth, okay? 
the way to solve this, remember we're, we're looking for the condition where marginal utility divided by the price. Okay, So it's this number, this is marginal utility for apples, and then this is marginal utility per dollar or per um, unit spent. Right? So this one's really easy because the price is a dollar. Right? So this first one, I get this first number by going dividing uh, 10 over 1, and the second one 8 over 1, 7 over 1, so on and so forth. Okay? Oops. That's my next example. Then in this one, uh, I've got the additional ha happiness from an orange, and I'm going to divide it now by the price of 2, okay? Because oranges are a little bit more expensive, okay, at this farmer's market. So it's 24 over 2, which is 12, 20 over 10, which is 10, and so on and so forth. So now what I want to do is I want to look for a situation where they equal, okay? So here are the different bundles that I can get off this table. I could get one apple and four, oops, sorry, uh, two oranges, okay? Because 10 and 10 equal each other. This is how to use the formula, okay? So now what we want to do is we want to see how much money do we spend, okay? And so did we spend $10? So the first apple cost $1. So that means I spent $1 on apples. And then I bought two oranges. So oranges are $2 each. So that's $4 on oranges for a total of $5. Okay, so I spent $5. Well, what's wrong with that? Well, I, I my budget in this problem is $10. I can spend more money, okay? And I can get more goods. Let's do the next one. So eight and eight equal each other. And so let's see what uh, if we can afford that, right? So uh, on this one, I'm going to buy two apples. So that's two dollars spending on apples, and I'm going to buy four oranges. So that's sorry, that's uh, eight dollars on oranges, and eight plus two does equal ten. So I've satisfied my budget constraint. Right? That's the answer. So the answer to this one is, I would buy in order to maximize my utility or this consumer. This consumer would buy two apples and four oranges. Just for the uh, to look at this, let's see what what about four apples and five oranges. Okay, they both equal six. Let's see if I can get out there. Right, so that's uh, four dollars spending on apples, and then uh, ten dollars spending on oranges. I can't afford that given the ten dollar budget. Now if the consumer comes back the next week with more money, in other words a higher budget, then they can get out to these bundles which are higher and those bundles exist on a higher indifference curve. Okay, They're, they're happier. So when the budget goes up, when the income goes up, we're able to uh, get more goods, get out to a bigger indifference curve or better indifference curve and what we're really doing is we're increasing our demand. Okay, so this this actually explains that. Okay, so that's that's how to do it. Uh, utility maximization problem.